Hello, my name is Stephen Alson. This is Stratford Paddock. Today, we're going to be looking at how does Jaden Sancho fit into Manchester United and how does he, I guess, improve Manchester United. We're looking at reports now that suggest that Manchester United are prepared to meet Dortmund's valuation to bring the Londoner to Old Trafford. United have needed a right winger since it feels like Antonio Valencia's third or fourth season. We've not really had a first choice right winger since then. Because of that, United have developed a tendency to play in the left channel a lot. One of the consequences of, def of playing all of our football in the left channel, Luke Shaw, Marcus Rashford, Paul Pogba, even Bruno goes over there and Cavani started having to go over there as well to pick stuff up when Tony Marshall plays. He operates in the left channel to come out of it to try and get goals. What we see when we're doing this is we congest everybody into one area. Now, that's extremely easy to defend. When you look at uh, a team, how they line up against Manchester United, and this isn't a, a negative thing on Mason Greenwood, it's just a consequence of how he plays as a guy that's a future centre-forward coming into the team. What you get is Mason Greenwood, even if he holds his position on the right-hand side, will drift in. One of the good things about Marcus Rashford, I think the RB Leipzig home game really highlighted this more than anything else, when he played on the right. I thought we got a lesser Marcus when he played on the right, but one thing he did do was hold his position. And Marcus is a player that you have to take notice of. More often than not, it's Aaron Wambasaka. And as a defence, you look up and you go, Bruno, Cavani, Pogba, Rashford, Marshall, shit. And you go and cover those. Now, you cover and condense. The one thing that you want as a defence is to be compressed, is to be tight, is to try and deny very obvious areas people can get in and hurt you. When you're able to put the entire back four and often two holding midfielders, defensive midfielders, possibly even a winger on the right-hand side to come back, you've got at least seven opposition players in one half of a pitch in maybe one third sliver of a pitch. United's all attacking talent is in there. What United don't have the ability to do is to go back to somebody because you're going back to Fred, you're going back to McTominay and then switch the play and come over here because it's Aaron Wambasaka. Now, we take so long in switching. Loads of teams come up against other teams defending in low blocks. Loads of teams come up against te people that keep it tight. If you look at Manchester City as, as one example, both wingers will be standing right on the paint of the touchline, and they'll hold their position. City use underlaps. They look for the number eights to underlap into the space to get in beyond, beyond the, the defence. What they're trying to do... Manchester City will try and have the winger stay as wide as possible and the fullback come because you have to mark that winger. Then they'll try and exploit the space in between the centre half and the opposition fullback by having one of their eights. You see Bernardo Silva, David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne operate into this space here. You also see them sometimes push up and have their fullbacks be the ones that are operating in this area. Sometimes a fullback will operate from what is more a traditional number eight sort of area as they're looking to build up and rotate the play. City are trying to move the ball around on the floor a lot to try and make those gaps in the very small areas in these little boxes. If you, if you see aerial shots of what Pep's done at the Manchester City training ground, he's drawn all sorts of lines in the bottom thirds of the pitches trying to develop these scenarios. He has a certain number of people have to be in certain boxes for them to be able to create overloads and find space and bring the football around and attack those areas. But it's not the only way to do it. You see plenty of other options of, of things that you're able to do. One example could be Klopp's Liverpool. Klopp's Liverpool also stretch teams uh, width-wise. They use their fullbacks to do it. Very, very obviously use Trent and very, very obviously use Robertson. And the underlaps in this, these instances come from their wide players. So you see that it's still a forward five of players but the, the utilisation and the way the, the balls will come in is just a slight variation from Klopp to what Guardiola does. Manchester United at the moment, because we're all congested into one side, because we haven't had a right winger since the 1930s, we're very easy to defend against. And Aaron Wambasaka, I think, has massively improved his game with the football at his feet. But Aaron Wambasaka isn't ready to be the sort of attacking fullback who is a threat. He's added bits to his game, but he's still not a threat. 
most Premier League and certainly Champions League level defenders, they look at him, they look at the rest of the team and go, I'm going to go stand over here. This is where I'm going to be needed. Now, the introduction of Jadon Sancho into this starting eleven does one massive thing. He stands in this channel. He waits, if he's patient, he waits in this channel. And he waits for the ball to come. Because if Manchester United are smart, they get the ball to him because he's absolutely lethal. And we'll go through his stats in a second and talk about him. But there's the one thing putting Jadon Sancho into this position does is now that fullback, the left back on the opposition goes, well, I'm not quicker than him. And 1v1, I'm going to get beat or I'm at least going to, I'm going to get beat half of the time at least. I'm going to go and just be five yard off him. Give myself a chance. I'm not going to be 25 yard off him like you would be with Wan Basaka. Just fucking leave him, ignore him. I'm going to go get five yard off him. Now, the left hand side centre back goes, well, I've got a 30 metre gap now in between me and the left back. I'm going to go half that. I'll go and stand 15 metres away from him. So I'm not leaving this guy entirely, but I'm also not having 30 metre gap to my left. Now, this centre-back then goes, Jesus, he's 10 metres away from me now. I'm going to go half that a little bit. And instantly, one player being standing over here on this side of the pitch has just created space that previously wasn't there for United when we were attacking. Why does it always look when the ball goes into Bruno Fernandes, he's got four men around him? That's why. Why does it always look for... Go back to Rooney, Falcao, RVP... All of these players, why does it look like it's four players on our centre forwards whenever they get the ball in those tight areas? That's why. Why does City just have seemingly so much space all the time in these areas, even against teams playing in the low block? That's why. How are Liverpool able to create space when everyone, I, I know it, you know it, and the opposition fullback knows it. Trent's going to cross that ball from there. We all know it and we can't stop it. Because you have to be able to adjust. No team ever gets it entirely their own way when they're doing stuff in football. There's pros, there's cons, there's, there's forces that react upon and rely upon other things that are happening in games. One of the fundamental things in football is the control and balance of space. And Manchester United, <laughs> Manchester United have actually got some very, very good, brilliantly crisp, one-touch, third-man run football. But because we don't have the width to attack with, because we don't have the balance to attack with, we're doing it in congested areas and we're not doing ourselves favours. I don't believe Jadon Sancho, on his own, converts this Manchester United side into title contenders. One of the reasons for that, I believe, because I think you can stand up Cavani, Rashford, Bruno and Sancho as a forward four, you can stand that up against anybody in the league. You bring Paul Pogba into that as well, you're talking about a very, very high-level, elite forward line. I think it'll break down a lot of teams. The next issue behind them is the number six. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you attack down one channel, you get no joy, you're forced to turn around and go the other way. Who's playing that pass? Fred McTominay? You're asking a lot of those players, you're asking them to be Perlo, to be Beckham, to be Scholes. They're not that good. They're decent squad players, but we need a conductor. A player that's like, yes, work that channel, drag them over, make the defence work there. All right, now give it me. Bring the ball back. Hit that touchline. Hit Sancho 1v1. A note of a big looping ball that takes four seconds to come down and the entire defence has shifted over for it. A nice flat ball that just arrives at the right time, the right speed, a little bit of backspin on it, it stops dead for him and Sancho attacks. Then Manchester United could be deadly. And I still think they've got a couple of weaknesses, set pieces ain't right, and I think you can still improve the defence. But it's a start. I hope that this is the first of several big name transfers that come in. And actually, do you know what, I'll, I'll take that back. I'm not asked about the big name. I'm asked about the big player. Cavani was probably more of a name than the transfer value suggested, but he's been sensational for us. I want someone who walks into the first team dressing room and goes, I'm here and I'm playing. That's it. 
You've got to improve your starting eleven. Otherwise, there's no point. Now let's have a look at what Jaden Sancho brings to what we have in terms of the rest of the team. We're going to look at players playing predominantly wide, and I'm going to give you a bit of a background info on what he's done so far. Because I'm sure you're all aware, but either way, we're going to throw it in there. So he won the uh, DFB Pokal in uh, 2021 and in 2019 the DFL Super Cup as well. He obviously won the Under-17 World Cup with England. Individually, he's won the, the Golden Player at the Under-17 European Championships, as well as the Under-17 European Championships of the tournament, European Championships team of the tournament. And he was in Bundesliga team of the season in 19 and 20 as well. His season's his season by season for Dortmund's ridiculous. So his first season, he, he made 12 appearances with one goal and four assists. I think he was 17 when he moved, or he just turned 18 when he moved. His second season, uh, he had 16 assists, 13 goals, 29 goal contributions in 43 games. Pretty good. His third season, his second full season, 19 assists, 20 goals, 39 goal contributions in 44 games. I don't care. I mean, there's barely any penalties in this. I think he's had one penalty that he's taken. There's barely penalties in this. Nearly a goal a game. Last season, remember last season? A couple of pundits saw him in the first couple of games, went, ah, he's been shit this season, and then just kept hold of that sort of opinion for the entirety of the season. Well, in 38 games, he managed to bring in 35 goals and assists. 16 goals, 19 assists. I mean, just utterly bonkers and outperforming his goals and assists as well. In terms of his expected goals, he was on 7.4, slightly above. In terms of expected assists, 6.8 for 11 assists. Comparison in terms of how many matches um, he's played and started. He started 24 matches. Greenwood started 21. Uh, Rashford started 33. Dan James just 11. In terms of the goals, Rashford was on 11, Sancho on 8, Greenwood 7, James 3. In terms of assists, Sancho 11, Rashford 9, Greenwood 2, James 1. He's expected, um, non-penalty expected goals and assists. He had 13.4, delivered 18, would have been 19, but there was a penalty involved in that. Uh, Rashford was 12.9 and delivered 20, which is phenomenal. Greenwood was 9.2 and delivered 9, and James 3.5 and delivered 4. Out of four players, he does have uh, the best goals and assists per 90, um, meaning well, it's every 0 0.83, meaning near enough every single time he steps out onto the pitch, there's a goal or an assist happening. Like You're literally adding goals and assists into the team by buying him. It's incredible. Uh, in terms of the amount of crosses that he put in, 52 for, for Sancho, 43 for Rashford, 30 for Greenwood and 18 for James. Shot creating actions um, per 90. Sancho, 125 in total this is. Uh, Rashford, 105, Greenwood, 50 and James, 16. Per 90, that breaks down to 5.46 for Sancho, 3.24 for Rashford, who was still incredibly in terms of Rashford didn't play well last year, but was still incredibly effective. Well, Sancho was almost twice as effective. And he was more than twice as effective than Greenwood. Uh, and several magnitudes more effective than Dan James per 90. In terms of his percentile, where he ranks in the world, he's, in, he's high up. In terms of assists, assists per, uh, per match, 0 0.51. It's in the 98th percentile. His shot creating actions, as we've just mentioned there, in the 96th percentile, progressive passes, pro progressive carries, he's in the 97th percentile. This is a player that is truly putting up world-class numbers. Is he genuinely world-class? I'll say he's still extremely young. There's still areas of his game that he has to develop. There's still areas of his game where there is definite improvements to be made. And that's what excites me with him. This isn't a player with potential that isn't putting out world-class output this is a player with potential who we see improvements that can be made that's already almost hitting that goal a game contribution that is is scary good and I also think that the reason for him coming back to Manchester people are going to talk about his relationship with Rashford people are going to talk about his relationship with other United players but I think his friendship group is just 
people who live in Manchester. This guy grew up in Manchester. He spent seven or so years at Watford Academy, only two and a half years in Manchester City uh, Academy. But I think he made some genuine friends here that he's constantly looking back to. And I think they're a massive reason for him coming. Yes, he's probably got a good relationship with Marcus Rashford. I'm sure that'll develop as they move to, if, if he moves to Manchester and they become friends off the field. But I think this is a player that actually wants to live in Manchester. That excites me. It also excites me that being an English player, he still hasn't played in the Premier League. But we know what he's going to get because he's no stranger to English football. Yes, it's academy football and yes, it's watered down and a little bit beige. But he still roughly knows what to expect. I'm incredibly excited for not just the balance he's going to bring the team and the space he's going to create for other people, but watching Jadon Sancho run down that right wing for Manchester United, a big two fingers up to Pep Guardiola and Manchester City. United have got an absolute talent here, a real gem. One that wants to be here for seemingly the right reasons, and I'm sure he's getting paid a bucket load for doing it as well. I think there's a bit of a bad boy in him. Some people are put off by that, but I'm not. I think you need character. I think he delivers character, and I think we need character. And the more character we get into this team, the better this team will be. I can't wait. Watch this space.